Hello everyone and welcome to the APS shell tutorial. Now strap yourselves in, this is going to be a longer video because it's such a big topic and I couldn't find a convenient way to slice this pie. As usual there will be timestamps, chapters, whatever I can do for your convenience. And also to spice things up a little bit, I'm going to try to answer a specific question this time around. What is the best shell? Now, I don't really like this question, but I think it's going to be interesting to try to answer it. Also, I'm curious to know, what are your favorite shells? What conclusion do you think I'm going to draw? Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments below and let's dive in. All right, let's start with kinetic shells. The mechanics that these shells use are going to come up again, so I think it's convenient. But what do I mean by kinetic shells? I mean, technically, all the shells can deal a little bit of kinetic damage. But no, I really mean pure kinetic shells. And in almost every case, you're going to be using either a sabo head, this one, an armor piercing head, or the heavy head. And then you're going to be using either a solid warhead body or a sabo warhead body. You can throw in some fin stabilizers. And you can use pretty much any of the shell bases. If you look here, I've got a combination of a fin and a base bleeder. Now, the fin cancels out the inaccuracy, as you can see on the side here. If I didn't use a fin, I'm going to remove it just for the sake of example. You can see I have an accuracy modifier of 135%. This is bad. This makes the shell uh, disperse more and hit, you know, less accurately. So it cancels out, but because it's a kinetic shell, the base bleeder gets a lot of value and essentially cancels out the loss of speed from the stabilizer fin body and this, you know, just gets a little bit more out of the shell. Uh, any base works really though. Um, tracers are really good for accuracy. Super cavitation bases are required uh, for submarines and they're very nice for firing or for combat near the surface of the water because they prevent the shells from bouncing off the water. So it's really good if you want to hit below the waterline against a ship, for example. And Graviton Rams, they're a bit of a meme, but you know, they work on kinetic shells. Now, are kinetic shells the best shells though? They do gain damage the faster they go, and shell speed is really good for hitting fast targets and getting past lamps. Now, if the accuracy thing makes you a little confused, I recommend that you watch my video on that. I'm going to try to remember to put in a little card in the corner, a link to that in the description, because that's a pretty big topic. But yes, speed is good for accuracy. Now, on top of that, they have the most health out of all shells, which makes them even better against lamps. However, they require a direct hit to deal any damage, and they create pretty small holes overall. And then again, slopes can reduce their damage significantly. If you hit at a shallow angle, it's going to deal practically no damage and bounce, just like in real life. So I wouldn't call them the best shells, but they are still definitely top tier. The icing on the cake here is that the shell itself is inert, and gunpowder, while explosive, it has a very low risk of causing a chain reaction, so they are very safe to use. Now, how do you make the best kinetic shells, you ask? Well, they are probably the most finicky uh, to set up, along with things like pen depth, which I'm going to get to. The goal here is going to be really to maximize kinetic damage while having an armor pierce value that is as close as possible to the amount of armor you'll be facing. I'll put the exact formula on screen, so feel free to pause if you're not 100% sure on the damage model. Anyway, so if you have more armor piercing than you need, it's essentially wasted. So good values to target are gonna be between 40 and 48. That's because metal is 40 armor, Stacked alloy is going to be 42, stacked metal is 48, and a plique is 50. So it's a really good middle ground to aim for. Now, when you go to make a shell from scratch, the damage model is going to be super important for choosing the size and length of your shell. In general, you should aim to have enough damage to pen your targets with each shot. 
This is because you really don't want to need repeated hits on the exact same block to reach the juicy, juicy internals. That's their goal, right? That's how you kill your targets. You destroy the internals. On bigger guns, and I mean really the gun itself, not the shell, you can afford to go a bit smaller because the overall DPS would let you pen targets quickly anyway. It's going to grind away the armor and it's going to give even more trouble for lambs because lambs need to have the fire rate and, you know, smaller shells are harder to detect. So it makes it more difficult for the lambs to deal with. If you have both a small gun and a small shell, then you're not going to pierce the armor and you're hoping that the target or yourself don't move enough that you can't hit that armor um, anymore. And then you're not able, you know, you have to start over again, grinding through the armor. So that's very bad. So as counterintuitive as it might be, you probably want a bigger shell on a smaller gun, just to make sure you have that chance to go through instantly. Now, if you choose a big shell, I don't recommend going too overkill either. It's really satisfying to make holes that go through your target and come out to the other side, but it's even better if you have a bit less damage and a higher rate of fire because you really want to poke as many holes in your target as possible to cripple and hopefully kill it at some point. More holes is better than fewer holes. Moving on. Next up, we have hollow points, which are named after the shell cap that you absolutely need to use to make this type of shell. Are hollow points the best shells though? Well, they're really similar to kinetic shells. Speed is great on them. They have health on par with kinetic shells, which makes them really accurate and good against lambs. However, they deal a bit less damage per shot and the damage is applied differently. You'll notice instead of kinetic damage, it says thump damage. Now thump damage is a bit more like an explosion. It's still very safe in your guns though. If you get hit, it's not going to explode. It's inert. The gunpowder is going to explode, but it's unlikely to chain react. Now, this might not sound amazing yet, but thump damage ignores the angle of impact and armor stacking. This makes hollow points crazy consistent and reliable, a bit like particle cannons. Now, how do you make the best hollow point shells though? It's a balancing act. Again, very similar to kinetic shells. Now, in this case, you might as well just go straight for Sabo Warheads. As you'll notice down here, I don't quite have 40 AP, which is a really good target for these because they ignore armor stacking, as I said. Uh, you could use solids if you expect high amounts of wood and stone. Not going to be the best for that, but you can do it. Fins are fine. Again, same thing with shell bases as kinetic shells. Uh, for example, super cavitation. You know, it will lose a little bit of damage, but again, it's not going to bounce off the water. Uh, base bleeder is really good for enhancing damage. Tracer is good for accuracy and, well, grab it on the rams for the memes. Right. The main thing to remember here is that you can't really expect to deal internal damage with a single shot. This means hollow points are just generally bad on small guns, because if you make a big shell, you might, might deal enough damage to break something functional, but it'll take forever to reload and it's not going to be super reliable in terms of internal damage. Uh, small shells with a small gun are going to suffer just the same way kinetic shells though. And on a big gun with good DPS, however, anything works. That's because big shells will either rip off wide chunks of armor and on a big gun, you're going to be able to keep firing and keep digging into those big holes. Or you can use small shells and they will burt their way in pretty quick. So my verdict is it's probably the best shells on big guns. Probably it's, it's definitely high up there but it is really quite meh on smaller builds. Then we have frag shells. Are frag shells the best? I'm gonna commit for this one and say, frag is gonna be the best option in most cases when you don't know what your targets are gonna be like. Frags don't care about their muzzle velocity, beyond accuracy anyway, and you can't really make an overkill frag shell. You can also use either a timed fuse like here or inertial fuses or both to deal some damage even on a miss or through shields if the shell bounces an inertial fuse will trigger it and cause the fragments to spray. Even better, 
If flams pop frag shells, the fragments still fly a decent distance and can still deal damage. A lot of damage too. How do you make the best frag shells? It's really hard to go wrong here. Frags scale quite well. Though it's probably still a good idea to make sure each shell has a decent amount of damage per shot. The main choice is going to be the fragment cone angle though. As you can see here, I pick 23 degrees. Generally speaking, if you want to dig deep, you should use a cone between about 20 and 30 degrees to focus your damage. Or you can go the other way and go somewhere between 90 to about 135 degrees to make more powerful fragments that are going to fly all over. Now, you do get more damage the wider you go, but I don't really recommend going for a full 180 degrees though. And that's because a lot of the time, you're going to send half of that damage flying away from your target. So, you know, losing half your damage, even though it's more damage overall, you can see, you know where I'm going with this. It's not ideal. The verdict, well, the only thing keeping frag from being the best general purpose shell is how absolutely ludicrously devastating it can be to yourself if the gun blows up. You should strongly consider using emergency fuses and shell ejectors if you want to use big frag guns. You were warned. Up next, I'm going to tackle HE and FLAC together. Are they the best kind of shell? Long story short, no. The best thing about these shells is the area of effect. They're going to be great against wooden or stone targets, fragile planes, and not much else. Generally, the best HE and FLAC shells are going to be high gauge and with a timed fuse such as here. Inertial fuses are okay and it's worth considering using emergency fuses with ejectors for safety, though it's not quite as bad as frag if the gun explodes. It's still quite bad, but eh. Anyway, you want big shells because you need that critical mass of explosives to have a big explosion. That way you can break fragile blocks without hitting them directly and you maximize your chances of breaking off chunks of armor. Though it's really hard to stack enough HE on APS shells to get through stacked metal, let alone heavy armor. Verdict, HE and FLAC have their uses, but they are pretty limited. Then we have heat shells. Are they the best shells? No, but they can be really good in some cases. Heat shells use pen metric down here, as per the formula, which I might explain uh, you know, in text on the screen, so you can pause. Anyway, they use pen metric to go through armor until it hits either an air gap or a functional block, or runs out of pen metric. Technically, they should be able to jump air gaps with enough pen metric, but I've never seen it happen in testing. Anyway, if it has enough pen metric to reach that gap or something soft, it creates fragments in a 20 degree cone. These frags. Now, how do you make the best heat shells? The trick here is going to be to use relatively big shells. The cool thing about heat is how tight the cone is for the fragments. That means even if there is a gap in the armor, you can make a shell big enough for the fragments to go through a layer of metal or two on the inside and then some and, you know, tickle those juicy, juicy internals that you want to destroy to kill your target. Now, the main problem with heat is lambs and ERA. ERA can negate a large heat shell on impact, and lambs can zap them out of the air. Overall, heat might not be the best, but if there are no lambs, or if you have a way to distract or damage lambs, heat can be pretty nasty. The best shell? No, but still quite useful and threatening. Hesh shells. Hesh has been pretty overpowered at times during the game's development, but is it the best shell today? No, but it's still a really viable option that's kind of similar to heat. Hesh goes through the armor until it hits a gap or something soft, but instead of having a pen metric, the fragments it spawns get weaker the more armor it has to go through. I'm going to display my amazing art skills here and put up a paint diagram to show you exactly how Hesh works, because it's kind of hard to put in words. Now, as you can see, Fragments can spawn in really sneaky ways, because no matter the angle of impact, they're going to spawn in the same spot. 
Because of this, Hesh works wonderfully well against turret caps. It's also really good if you can hit awkward angles basically anywhere where there might not be any internal armor. And it's really good against compact builds that use thin layers of heavy armor, for example. Now, since the trick to Hesh is hitting the right spot, using burnt Hesh or, you know, small shells at a high fire rate can work quite well. But big boom boom hash can potentially overpower internal armor, so it's hard to go wrong with hash shell designs. Is it the best shells? Again, no, but ERA and lambs can still negate a lot of the damage, and a good armor layout will limit its potential. But if you can get around those, it's a really good option. EMP. Oh, EMP. I'm gonna say it right now, I don't like EMP. It's especially awkward to talk about right now because it's getting tweaked, but let's do it anyway. Is EMP the best? No, but it is extremely deadly to small vehicles and it can cripple larger vehicles by destroying weapon controllers, detection, LAM nodes, and maybe even destroy the AI if you're lucky. If you're struggling in the campaign, EMP can be really good because it can let you capture vehicles instead of destroying them. How do you make good EMP shells? Well, definitely don't go the Burt way. A thousand paper cuts is definitely not the way to go here because wood, stone, and rubber reduce the damage by a flat amount. For example, if you fire 10 shells with 500 EMP damage, and it has to go through one meter of wood, you lose 900 EMP damage total, using the current values anyway. If you use one shell with 5,000 EMP, you'd only lose 90. Now, EMP has changed in the current version of the beta, so specific target values aren't as relevant anymore, but generally, bigger is better. And it's even more true because surge protectors have also changed, in the past, sometimes they would lower the entire EMP charge more so than what they need to be destroyed. So for example, if you had a million EMP damage and you went through one surge protector, it would negate 95% of the whole thing instead of 95% of what it takes to destroy it. A bit complicated, but generally speaking, there aren't any target values anymore, just bigger is better. Moving on. EMP might not be the best shell, but what about disruptors? I think disruptors are incredibly underrated, especially as secondary weapons. Now, if you look here, scroll down, I know it looks like a weaker EMP shell, but disruptors have the unique property of reducing the strength of any planar shield they go through, right here. As you can see, this one shell can just about cut in half the strength of shields. Given maximum strength shields will bounce about a third of the shells thrown at them on average, you can essentially increase the output of your other guns and other shells by about 50% against shielded targets by using disruptors. On a big build where a secondary gun using disruptors can negate shields, this is a lot of added value. Now, how do you make a good disruptor shell? Well, it's hard to go wrong because the effects on shields scales, so a lot of small shells or a few big ones will achieve mostly the same thing. The main thing to think about is going to be lambs. Lambs will love to eat your disruptors, so using a bunch of smaller shells to overwhelm lambs and making them harder to detect is a viable strategy. Not the best shell by a long shot, but an amazing support shell to improve your damage. And finally, that just about covers most of the pure shells. But what about hybrid shells? For example, Hollow Point HE have been pretty good in the past, but that era is gone now. In fact, I don't recommend mixing shells these days. Most hybrid shells are just gonna be worse than a specialized shell. There is one exception though, and that's pen depth. Now I call it pen depth because historically you needed a penetration depth fuse to make it work at all. If you didn't use one, it would just blow up on the first block that it hit, which is not what you want for this. Now these days you can skip the fuse or you can use a timed fuse like I did here. 
depends how confident you are and you know you should probably test these things but here is the real question are penned up shells worth it are they the best shells well hell yeah they are worth it but are they the best shell that's a bit trickier penned up shells should be fast and big which means they're gonna have a lot of health they're gonna be well very fast so they're really hard to defend against uh, and lambs, it's gonna really gonna hard. It's really gonna be hard for lambs to pop these shells before they hit you. They might bounce on shields every now and then, as I said earlier, about one third of the time. But really hard to defend against usually. Now the goal is to get inside the target, but instead of poking a small hole, you detonate either explosives or fragments on the inside, inside the soft internals. Very, very deadly but very finicky. So how do you make a good penned up shell? Well, you're pretty much gonna want an armor piercing cap by default because it's really hard to get a high uh, armor piercing value on these shells because of the payload. But if you use a Sibo, um, a Sibo cap, where is it? It's over here. Here, as you can see, it really, really lowers your payload it, it destroys it most for most part it's just it's not gonna be worth it if you use a symbol head is what it boils down to so armor piercing cap and about two to three solid bodies you can maybe swap one for a fin and a base bleeder or you can use a super calf base if you are going to be fighting close to the surface as I mentioned before, you might want to use a fuse, but it's not mandatory anymore. The shell will naturally explode when it runs out of kinetic energy. Now the payload is where it gets interesting. Generally, I recommend about two modules of either HE or FRAG for best results. Using more will really hurt your ability to penetrate targets because that's what reduces your uh, armor piercing value. Now, which of the two you pick is mostly personal preference. Um, HE gets a damage bonus in enclosed areas, so it's going to be nice, but fragments can bounce around and reach further. So really, personal preference. In terms of gauge and length, penetration depth starts working more or less at about 250 millimeters, but it's better at higher gauges. It's also really hard to make a good pen depth shell that's short, so usually you'll be between six and eight meters long. Um, I'm just gonna mention really quickly, you can make a pen depth shell with a secondary shape charge. And that's mostly if you expect really thick armor, what's gonna happen is you're gonna hope to penetrate the first layers of armor, reach an air gap, fail to penetrate the second layer of armor, but the heat will go through. So it can work. It's doable. It's potentially going to end up in disappointment. But if you know what you're doing, it's a possibility. And now time to talk about railguns for a minute. I'm going to make a dedicated video about the differences between gunpowder and railguns. But for the sake of completion, let's take a minute here. For most shells, even if you plan on using absolutely no gunpowder at all, you should not use the gunpowder casings. These things right here. It's just not worth it. For most shells, the shell itself is going to hold enough charge to perform well even without them. If you need more oomph, you can actually use gunpowder casings instead, because those essentially have power in them by default, right? They, they work perfectly fine. You can make hybrid railgun gunpowder shells. And why am I bringing this up now? Because penned up shells can only pen so much armor, even at maximum length. And the only way to push those shells further is by adding rail charge on top. Now it can be worth using shorter shells and get the speed through rail charge instead of uh, gunpowder specifically for those shells, because the longer autoloaders can be hard to work around, especially on smaller or even medium-sized builds. But yeah, that's basically it about railguns, right? You can use railguns for any of those shells. You don't necessarily need railgun casings, but it's especially interesting for pen depth. 
And that about covers all of the shells. I'm going to cheat a bit and say that the best shell depends on the situation, but I'm going to commit to a holy trinity and say that kinetics, hollow points, and frags are going to be your most versatile and powerful shells in the vast majority of cases. They're very reliable shells, usable at almost any size, versatile, all of that good stuff. Anyway, I hope that helps you pick your shells in your bills. Please leave a like, comment, and all that if it did. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>